Yo, what is up, YouTube? It's your boy, YBP Gang, YBP Nation, YBP Boxing, YBP MMA. Come at y'all with the UFC 290 post event recap, review, all that type of stuff. Um, probably card of the year, so I thought I should do um, what I did last time for the other cards that I did um, for two for UFC Jacksonville and then um, the Sean Strickland card recently. Just going to try to do this, make this a regular thing. Just talking about the card vaguely. Um, but this one, I think I'll really go in depth. It'll probably be a longer video. Um, but yeah, man, we'll start from... We can start from the main event, I guess. We'll go top to bottom. Um, I mean, what a performance by Alexander Volkanovsky. Just bell to bell. Yair yeah, Rodriguez just wasn't... Like, Volkanovsky would just step ahead in a lot of the exchanges. He had his moments like with the kicks and stuff, but... It seemed like he was starting to come on a little bit uh, towards the end of the fight, actually, like round round two, round three, more round three. He was starting to, like, figure stuff out, and then he gets hit with that. Um, Alexander Volkanovsky kind of headbutts him to the chin, and then that kind of slowed the momentum down for Yair Rodriguez. And then after that, you know, Volkanovsky hit him with a really good shot. I think it was like a left hook or a hook of some, some sort, a uh, big shot. And then just proceeds to finish him, gets gets a takedown, and then just, just pounds him down. I mean, um, biggest thing I saw from that fight was, like, Volkanovski's, like, power. I mean, he's not really known as too much of a finisher. So seeing him land that big of a shot on the striker that people didn't think. I was one of those people who thought, you know, Volkanovski shouldn't try to stand with the other too much. And he didn't. But as he broke him down, as he kind of broke his spirit, he started to get more comfortable with the striking. And he's still with him pretty well, like, honestly, throughout the fight. Obviously, yeah, you're at his moments. He's an elite striker. Um, maybe he was a little overrated coming into this matchup. People were like, you know, I think Volk, Volk should be in those conversations too. But um, Volk, Volk looked amazing in this matchup. I think next for him, I think uh, the Islam fight is up, is up for sure because Charles Olivier obviously just came out and said that He's not going to be ready for the Abu Dhabi card. So he's in play for that. And then we don't know if Dustin Poirier and Gaethje are going to be able to make that turnaround. So if they need someone. But um, in all likelihood, he should be fighting Ilya Taporia next. Um, that, that Islam situation is going to be interesting. I think probably Michael Chandler or Armand Saryuki will be next. It's going to be a weird title fight because you have all these other contenders. But just with timing and stuff and... Islam needing to fight on that card specifically, it's probably going to be one of those guys, deserving or not. And then for Yair Rodriguez, I'd like to see him fight. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Um, I think Arnold Allen wouldn't be a bad matchup. Just uh, definitely got to take some time off. It This this fight for, for Yair is going to be a learning experience. I mean, that's all you can really take from it. it shouldn't, like, not, not retirement or anything. I mean... No one really thought he was going to win this matchup. I mean, people thought he would, but you saw the odds. I mean, Volk's just that guy. I think people just needed to... People, a lot of the people picking Yair, was, there was a little bit of doubt on Volk's side. Like, he, when's he going to come out and look old, look his age? And he didn't. He's He's been fighting. He's been active. and He's in the prime of his career, and he's not wasting any time getting these fights off and uh, picking off as many people as he can while he's in his athletic prime. So I love that for him. Yeah, I think Arnold Allen would be a bad fight. Yeah, year first Arnold Allen. Um, and then you give Taporia the next the next shot. Um co main event, fight of the I mean, fight of the year, man. I mean, this is just a beautiful fight right here. Brandon Moreno versus Alexander Pantoja. I keep I will preface, like I keep hearing people say that like Moreno won this fight, like he did not win this fight. Like, let's let's be completely I don't know the judge that gave it to Ben Cartilage. I keep people saying that he's like a really good judge and he's made like good decisions. I'm not too sure of that. I have to look at made decisions and see the decisions he's made, but I mean that's just that's a bad decision, you know. But it just seemed as if he was he was scoring it as if it was a street fight, because people have to remember. I mean, I, I heard like Michael Bisping just completely discredit what um, Moreno, I mean, uh, what Petosha was doing. He said like if it was a street fight, then Moreno would have won and. Like, all this, like, come on, it's just, at the end of the day, MMA is a sport. Mixed martial arts is a sport. It's not, we're not, it's, we're not in a street fight. There's dynamics to, to fighting that wouldn't be in, um, 
that wouldn't happen in a street fight. There's, you know, no no needs to a ground opponent. There's rules. It's a sport at the end of the day. So you can't blame Pantoja. I mean, we're we're fighting. He, so he gets his back, you know, that control time. Moreno Moreno can't do anything about that position. Um, and he, he's in a more dominant position, threatening for the finish. So how can you... So I, I just thought that was really interesting. I mean, Ben Carlos didn't give Pantoja any credit whatsoever for his grappling exchanges. I mean, now on the feet, it was, it was pretty even. I mean, people forget. I mean, Moreno got dropped in the first round. Like, we just completely forgot about that. Um, got dropped in the first round. Pantoja was a clear round. I just don't see... there. You, you can't... Find me three rounds for Moreno. I, you just can't, man. I mean, it really comes... If you're giving rounds to Pantoja, it's because you're completely discrediting all the grappling work and the takedowns that Pantoja did. And you can be like, oh damage i mean the damage was so close that you kind of have to um look at other stuff obviously i have to look at the judging criteria and um review that myself and see how like you know the specifics of it the ins and outs but pantoza won this fight i'm glad he got the decision but i was just it shouldn't have been a split decision i thought it was pretty clearly four one three two there's no i mean okay each round was close each round by round was close no, some of them weren't close, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, the fifth round wasn't close. That was clearly Pantosha. How do you give the fifth round to Moreno? That's that's a travesty, man. That's crazy. So, yeah, round one, Pantosha. Round two, Moreno, very clearly. That's the only round he won. Every other round. Three was close, but you edged it to Moreno. Four, clearly Pantosha. I'm no, sorry. Three was close, but I gave it to Pantosha. Four, Pantosha. And then five, very clearly Pantosha. Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be... Brazil finally has another champion in the UFC. Um, I think the next fight for Pantoja should be uh, Amir Al-Bazi in Abu Dhabi. You know what I mean? Amir Al-Bazi, the crowning of the true champ. You know what I mean? So, hey, shout out to Al-Bazi. And then Moreno, I think he should fight Roy Val. Or you could just flip it around. You could have Roy Val get the belt next. But I just think Al-Bazi, like, with his fan base... Um, and then all the people in Abu Dhabi, that'd be really special. Um, yeah, man, is going to be a star. I mean, a great fight. I heard people talking about let's do a rematch. It's possible, but you also got to look at it like they're, he's 0 for 3 against Moreno. So it's like, eh, you know what I mean? It's 0 for 3 is crazy. Not going to lie. So we'll see, man. What's what's um, what's with Moreno? Um. He's, like I said, with this flyweight division, like, it's a really good division because I think on any given night, any of these guys can beat each other. I mean, you saw Kakar France was beating Moreno, like, I thought I thought it was, like, 2-0. And then Moreno just kicks him, kicks him to the liver and beats him, you know? On any given night, any of these guys can beat each other. We just saw Abazi um, beat KKF. Controversial or not, he got the W. Um, what was it called? Um, Pantoja just goes out there and nukes Perez. Um, Nicolau gets knocked out. In a couple seconds by, um, by uh, what's, uh, Brandon Roy Val. So all these guys, I mean, on any given night, they could beat each other. So it's a really good, really good division, really good weight class, really c- competitive weight class. And it's good. I thought with this win, Moreno was kind of building his star power. You know, people were starting to like him and kind of lost him now. And that Mexican MMA is kind of took a hit for sure with the Reno Aldana's performance against Nunez getting completely, like, dominated. No retaliation whatsoever he gave you a year pretty much getting dominated in the main event and then now moreno in a really good fight i think this only raises his stock but um but does it i don't know yeah does it doesn't really raise his stock i'm not sure i'm not sure but um yeah great fight though man i uh I, 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 honestly I, I wouldn't be opposed to a rematch but I don't, not now, I, not in the media rematch, like maybe like down the line. I think Moreno could could work back to it. But great fight. I think Patosa deserves it. Um, then let's go to the biggest story of the whole card. Robert Whitaker versus Drake is Duplessis, man. I mean, shoot. Man, I mean, I wanted, let me let me just preface this. Like, I, I this is one of those picks where like, same with the Benny versus uh, Olivier. But that was way closer on the odds. That was like a 50-50 fight, right? But I wanted Olivier to win, but I was like, no way he wins. I, I think Drickus winning was the best thing that could have happened to the middleweight division. Because same with 
middleweight has a problem with contenders. It's why they're pushing people. It's why I mean this fight happened. I don't think it. I don't think it should have happened. But now I'm kind of glad it happened. You know, because now he's like kind of proven that he's worthy. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, middleweight has a problem with contenders. Like we, you know, we we just don't have enough people because Izzy's pretty much cleared out the whole division, like destroying Whitaker and you know all these type of people. So we need Drickuses. We need a Bo Nickel. We need. That's why Abus, I think, got that spot against Strickland. They just need more guys. Ikram Maliskarov, Hamzat Shemaev, whenever he comes. We need more people to um, challenge these ranks, rather fast track the people. Alex Pereira. So we were kind of at a deficit, like, with contenders. The next title shot was, like, people were, like, genuinely thinking, like, Strickland might be in the in the running. And I, that just tells you, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting kind of bad out here, man. So for Drickus to get this win, I mean, no one, I, when I tell you, like, even though the odds were not, I mean, they're not that lopsided, but, man, I mean, bro, everyone was counting them out. You, I don't know who picked Drickus. Not too many people. And if you were picking Drickus, a lot of people were just, like, joking, you know? They were not, like, for real, for real. And people, like, I mean, if you pick Drickus, man, like, they were clowning you. They're like, are you stupid? People who put money on Drickus, like, they were like, it, it, it was just a travesty, man, I mean. You know, now people are going to have to delete the comments, man. Uh, all the people who doubted Drick is, I was one of them. I wanted him to win for sure, but I just, I, I just couldn't see it happening. Like, how in the world, Robert Whitaker, and people who are, who are, um, like, making for the Whitaker, like, oh, he's not all that. He was never all that. I think he, he was all that and more. I just think this was more Drick is coming out and having a great performance showing out it was more that than Robert Whitaker looking old or looking bad he looked fine his jabs he was snapping he looked quick um got a takedown at one point but I mean Drick is it's the nose man it's the no I think Drick is a couple months ago with the nose stuff probably would have lost it would have been competitive but I Drick has fought a smart fight I mean first round I was already shocked that he won around so now I'm like okay like what's going on and that was Whitaker looked good, and he lost the round. That's like that's kind of crazy, um, you know. It's I don't even know. I mean, Drick is. I will, I'll always give him that credit. I mean, people just say like, "Oh, he's just weird." Like he's like the one of the worst fighters in the UFC. Like he's his awkwardness and his unorthodox style. Um, because I mean, yeah, when he fights, he's very unassuming. Very um, you don't think there's a lot of threat there, but he, I mean, he caught. I mean, the jab was working on, on both sides, but especially for Drick, it's caught him with a, knocked him down with a jab. I mean, show man, Whitaker, the, the chin, man, I don't know, it just went. And then Drick is a finisher, man, he gets, I think he's at all finishes, I don't know if he's gone to a decision in the UFC, all finishes, he's that next guy. And then Izzy comes right, um, right into the ring, kind of similar to what they did with Sean O'Malley when Aljo beat Sahuda. I'm not too much of a fan of that because I think it steals the the fighter's moment who had just won. But, you know, we got to promote fights in the UFC. You know, Izzy's in there saying the Edward like multiple times. Drick is, I, he had a really good one-liner. He said, um, what did he say? He said, um, I may be African, but I'm no brother. But you're no brother of mine. He said that. Um, that was a really good one-liner by him. So it should be a good fight. Uh I think that fight should really be in Africa, though. It really should be in Africa. It's not going to hit the same in Sydney, you know? The the whitaker Adesanya fight, that's, that's clearly, I think, what they wanted. It's way bigger in Sydney because, you know, Whitaker's in... He's from Australia, and then Izzy's from New Zealand. But I think, I mean, anywhere you put this, the, the trash, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get, you know, the, the racial undertones. It's, it's very prevalent when you're, when you're hearing about these guys going back and forth. Um... I mean, Izzy repeatedly saying that word. Like, it's it's getting like pretty. It's getting heated. I love this though. This is very good. I mean, it's it's gonna sell. Race race sells, man. I mean, they. I'm telling you, man. People they're gonna pick a side. Drink. I mean, the Drick is apologist, man. I mean, they're gonna come out in numbers. Um, all the people who thought that Drick is like would lose, and that's the thing. The thing with Drick is, is every single one of his fights. Well, I've picked Drick is. Let's see. I picked him to lose against Darren Till. I, I think I picked him to, I don't know, I'd have to check, like, on all my predictions that I've had with him, like, on topology. But I picked him to lose a lot of his fights, you know? And 
he keeps proving me wrong, but I still can't pick him to win the next fight. So even after he beat Till, I was like, no way he beats, you know, uh, what was that? That was the last fight, right? Yeah. When he beat Brunson, I was like, no way he beats Till. And just, and just so on, so on. He, he finally he beats a guy like Whitaker, and I still can't pick him to beat Izzy. I can't. It's just the way. No, nah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, and then he'll beat Izzy. And then after that, he might move up a weight class and fight a Pereira. And I'll be like, no way, no way. Or he'll fight like Jan Blahovic. And I still won't pick him. But then he'll find a way. He finds a way. But this one, he didn't, he didn't have to find a way, really. It wasn't a, like his other performances. He genuinely was, I don't want to say the better fighter, but he, I mean, he just looked beautiful out there. I don't know, man. He looked like the better fighter out there. I mean, just kind of all classed with a girl a little bit. I don't even know. That's it. I'll have to watch that one back, man. I mean, the power is real. Not to drink his, could be the, 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 the first true African champion. I mean, sure. <laughs> Second, 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 second. I don't know. I think Nganu has to count. Nganu counts, I think. Um, so, yeah, man. Might be the first to live, to like truly live in Africa, though. You know what I mean? Um, next fight, Jalen Turner versus Dan Hooker. Man, was I wrong. I was wrong with a lot of picks on this card. I got to look back, but... I was I thought Turner was lock of the lock of the lock of the month lock of the century, honestly at minus two eighty I mean. He's one of those guys where I thought he should have been a bigger favorite. And Hooker turned back the clock a little bit at the expense of his health though like I mean it wasn't a clean decision whatsoever and no the, bro the judges on this card were like really weird, I'm not gonna lie like Pantoja being a Pantoja Moreno being a split decision should not have been. I don't care how close you thought that fight was. It, no, Pantoja won very clearly. He very clearly edged out these the close rounds. He edged them. Um, just because a round is close doesn't mean that you just give it to the other fighter. Like, you know what I mean? So, if you're biased, then yeah. But like Pantoja's like very cl- winning these rounds. You know, so. Just because just cause it's 4-1 or it's 49-46 doesn't mean that each round was close. It just means that Pantoja did enough. And I think he did enough to win these the, the close rounds um, pretty clearly if you watch those back. But another one here, I thought t- at the end of the fight, I was like, dang it. There's no way. But Hooker got the dub. And and then I hear split decision. Like, what? There's no way. I mean, I, I want to turn it a win for sure. I'm sure people who had money on the fight, they're like, oh... We might have something here, man. Turner might have like squeaked it out, but no way he deserved to win the fight. Like, I mean, I don't want to say deserved, but like he didn't do enough for the course of the fight. It was very clearly, um, I don't remember the round breakdown or how I had it, but I thought Hooker got the last round. I don't know. I don't know what round it was though. Um, it was a close fight though, but I, at the end of it, I thought I thought Hooker had, had done enough. In that uh, second and third, it was it was some tough fights, tough rounds to score though, to be honest with like, cause they were they were so back and forth. It's hard to measure the impact of shots, cause both those guys are so stoic. Uh, but Turner's body language throughout the fight, it, it didn't look good, bro. Like it's you know hard to pick that guy. To obviously it's round by round, but I... yeah, man, I, I'm not, I'm not really sure what happened though. I mean, we, we might have to consider a move to welterweight after this, cause. You know, missed weight. It seemed like the cardio was down. Um, and it just seemed like Hooker wanted it more, too. You know? I felt like Turner... And I don't want to... I, I hate saying stuff like that because I'm not in his camp. I don't know. I'm not in the fight. I don't, I'm not really sure. But Hooker just seems to have some sort of willpower, man. He just he just wanted it like just a little more than, than Jim Turner in this matchup. Because I, I know he was barely breathing hard, too. You know, he cuts a ton of weight, too. Turner does, too. I mean, he missed weight. But Hooker just bit down on his mouthpiece. Got hit with some big shots. I mean, that head kick should have put him out. I'm not gonna lie. Like he, this fight definitely want to take some some time off. It was almost like a there's a term for it. It's like a pyrrhic victory where like, I like even though you still won the fight, you took so much damage that it was almost equivalent to a loss. That's kind of how he like Hooker. Even though he won this fight, man, he had to go through hell to do it. You know, so he's gonna have to take some time off. Definitely going to have to go back to the drawing board. 
And uh Hooker next Hooker's next fight I think should be um <clears throat> Oh, shoot. Okay, here we go. Uh, Hooker, he's ranked number 12 in the division, so he's probably going to go up. Yeah, RDA is not in the division. Armand's too high. Because once you get to Armand, Gamron, Fazee, that's like a upper echelon of the division. So, uh, we could go. I think Hooker versus Dawson is cool. E either one of those guys against Dawson, actually. Turner might be like, okay, no one wants to fight me. Let's just do it. But yeah, that was going to be the boogeyman of this division. No one's going to want to fight him. So, if, I mean, if everything lines up, maybe even, no, Moicano and Dawson train together. So, yeah, it's going to be hard to get fights in that division, man. He's going to have to, yeah, it's going to be tough one, man. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, Hooker Dawson is probably next. It's probably the next fight, which, which sucks. I mean, because even that, the snow's a killer right there. You know, there's no, there's no favors at lightweight. Every single fight's going to be hard. But, yeah, I mean, I thought Turner was going to be that next guy, and these these older um, older guys like Hooker, Gaethje, Gaethje beating Fazee, they just keep knocking off these these new gen lightweights. So, yeah, I was very impressed with Hooker. He kind of turned back the clock, but definitely got to take some time off. Both of them, really good fight. It, it sucks because the co-main event, Petosa Moreno, was so good that now everyone's going to forget about Turner Hooker, that this fight even happened, but... Yeah, man, great, great fight. Definitely go back and rewatch it if you can. Um, <clears throat> next fight, Bo Nickel versus Val Woodburn. Um, this is funny, man. I don't know. Like, my stream turned off. I don't know, like, uh, when this fight happened. So I had to, like, find, find like, a, a, a clip of what happened on Twitter. During the moment, I obviously saw it, like, before, like, when it happened. But rewatching the fight, like, Nickel just went out there. I'll have to rewatch it again, but I mean, it, it ended pretty quick. It was like 37 second knockout. Um, just went out there. I don't even know if he shot for a takedown. Just, Val Woodburn's really patient, too, coming into it. And Nickel just caught him with some, some big shots. I mean, one, two, three, straight to the dome. And then got him, got him, just rocked on his feet. I mean, he was kind of out on his feet. He was like doing the chicken dance. And then just finished him right there. So that was really impressive seeing the striking, too. We saw in his first matchup. First, first ever fight that he had, he knocked a guy out. Didn't have to use the wrestling. I don't, but I don't want to see Nickel do that more. I, I think I'd rather see him just continue. Like you have the wrestling, don't turn into like a Kamaru Usman or like a, um, some of these guys who they can wrestle, but then they just or like a Michael Chandler, like they they have the wrestling in their back pocket, but they fall in love with their their hands. I don't want to see that for Bo Nickel. I think he should just continue with the wrestling. But it's good to have it in your back pocket, though, I mean, or just, just to have it in general, just to have good striking um, so you can stand up with people. But the wrestling's so good. I mean, it would be a shame if he just stopped using it. So, yeah, I mean, not much to take away from this matchup. This, I mean, Val Woodburn, I don't know. I, just, <laughs> I, don't know I, I wanted to, like, I was trying to talk myself into thinking he had a chance. And, you know, yeah, no, it was never... Never, never really had a chance. I mean, Bo Nichols just levels ahead of this kid, you know. He, I mean, he had him beat. So he had him beat on the feet. And then we didn't even get to the takedown. So he, he, he virtually had no chance. I mean, he fought. Bo Nickel fought like the biggest favorite in UFC history. <clears throat> so, yeah, for Bo Nickel, I think his next fight should be. Um, if we want to go like ultra fast track, give him Derek Brunson right now. I think that's a that's an easy pick off, you know. But I, I don't think. If Derek Brunson sticks sticks around for long enough, then maybe you can build to that. But I think Derek Brunson is gonna retire soon. He might even be retired right now. But if if Brunson stays for a while, maybe like if Brunson fights for like two more years, maybe, and he's still ranked. Let's see, Brunson age. No, not Jalen Brunson, bro. What, bro? <laughs> bro, I'm talking about the UFC contender. 39 years old. Okay, he's not going to fight for much longer. But he's old. That might be a good pickoff. But then once once Bone Nickel gets ranked, it's just like he has to just keep going higher and higher. So you want to slow on that. There's, there'll, there'll always probably be like a slow or like a, an old contender up there. 
Robert Whitaker seems like easy pickings not now nowadays, man. Like shit. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'd probably match him like either rebook the Trayshawn Gore fight or I would do um I would do Bo Nickel versus um Let me see. Rankings MMA, middleweight, world middleweight rankings. Go down. He said he wants like a top 25 guy next. Uh, and he just be, beat Jamie Pickett, so it's like. Mm, bro, what? Okay. Mm, yeah, these guys are too high. Nah, these are. A little too high for him. So. It's a little tough right here. I'm trying to find a good match for him. Okay, this is nice right here. Um, hmm. He could fight. I like Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. That's a good fight for him. That's a tough one, though. But it'll, it'll prepare him. Because Abdul can wrestle. He has good takedowns. He's a veteran in the UFC at this point. So I like that fight. Um, Abus Magomedov. I mean, why not? He's, he's a name. Now people know him because of the Strickland fight. He can wrestle too. He has power. Not the best cardio though. Um, Mahmoud Muradov has good hands. Yeah. It's tough. You got, you got to match him up carefully. Cause I don't know if you want to give him. You could give him Chidi Chidi Unjikwani. It's beatable. Derive beat him. Uh, yeah. Now we're getting a little too high. I think you give him. Um, you give him a good guy like. Um, Adolfo Vieira is not a bad fight. I th I say you give him Adolfo Vieira, or you give him um, Adolfo Abus, or Abdul. Razak Al Hassan. Probably Adolfo. I think that's a winnable fight. And he's a name too. So I think that's a pretty good fight. On to the prelims. Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price. Just a beautiful, beautiful fight. Beautiful way to end uh end his career. Robbie Lawler. I loved how they after the knockout, they gave him his package uh with all the previous fights that he had in the UFC, all the highlights and the voiceover of like Dana saying he's like the greatest of all time. So I love that for him, man. Like this is good. I think MMA, we don't, it's not a forgiven sport, you know? Like, you see, like, like Kobe Bryant had his, like, uh, retirement tour back in the day. Um, LeBron, obviously, getting celebrated with his, uh, like, when he when he passed, like, Kareem with the uh, scoring record, they had a, a mid-game ceremony, you know? So, we other sports do, like, a better job of celebrating their, their legends than we do, you know? Like, Aaron Anderson Silva only just got into the Hall of Fame. We just, we don't preserve, I think we, do, well, the preservation of the sports, like, better than maybe some other sports but because yeah i mean you can go on fight pass you can watch a lot of fights but as far as celebrating our legends and like celebrating them while they're here i mean I mean, look at frank yeager's last fight you know he gets smashed up with chris gutierrez gets ko'd you know and his his final fight his retirement fight ends on a sad note i'll be lawler i mean obviously they can't control the outcome of the fight but what they can control is like giving him a decent fight. It's, it, you know, Nico Price. That's that's the right fight. You know, it's it's, it's somewhat fair. They're both older guys, both kind of washed. Um, this I mean, this is the right fight. Like like a like a Nick Diaz type of fight. Um, and yeah, I mean, he did he, he did the dang thing. I mean, he knocked him out. And then the way that they were able to put the package together, have him on screen. It was just a great happy ending. You don't see too much of that. We saw Nunes had a happy ending. Um, Khabib had a somewhat happy ending, you could say. Um, just retiring on top. So you love to see that. And uh, yo, Robbie Lawler, man, I hope, like, whatever he's doing, whatever he plans to do, maybe he tries to, maybe he uh, tries to grab, I mean, man, I mean, you could do GSP versus, oh, my bad, Robbie Lawler in, um, in uh in grappling, they could like bring him back. They could do like a little um well Kamaru was obviously like he was a champion, but yeah, I mean they say 
GSP was the greatest welterweight champion of all time. Robbie Lawler was, a, I think he was a like a welterweight champion, right? If I'm not mistaken, right? This is, um, yeah. So they could do that. I mean, that's an option. Everyone's talking about Khabib. That's, I mean, Robbie Lawler versus GSP and grappling would be pretty cool in the future. But hey, man, he deserves a break from all this type of stuff. I just I love it. I love seeing Lennon's retire on top, man. That's that's the best way to go out. And unfortunately, man, Nico Price, I don't even know, man. It's kinda <laughs> it's kinda not really being thought of in this uh whole equation, but yeah, I don't know what you do with Nico Price, man, but Robbie, that's great for him, man. So so happy for him. Um Tatsuro Tyra versus Edgar Chires. Man, I mean, bro, I mean Chires, bro, these Mexicans, bro, as much as I heard some Mexicans, like, they were kind of complaining. They were like, oh, like, Moreno lost and this stuff, bro, like, and, no, I mean, Mexican MMA is, like, taking, t- it took a little hit tonight, but there's so many good Mexican prospects on the way, man. There's so many, like, tough ones, even though, even the next one I'm about to talk about, yeah, Yasmin Uregi, she just got KO'd, but I was so impressed with Chires going into this week. I picked him. I said Chara's by first round knockout. And he nearly, honestly, he almost had it. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? He hit. He was better on the feet, more powerful than Tyra. The thing that really, the thing that lost him the fight was pulling for guillotine. I mean, that guy, man. I'm, I know he's a guillotine specialist. And he actually almost had it at the end of the fight. Give that 10 more seconds and Chara's, Chara's won your money, man. I mean, I'm telling you, that kid, he'll fight for your money, man. I'm telling you. He will. He'll fight for your money. He'll make it worth it for sure. So I was I was entertained throughout that whole fight. I had, I think, um uh I had a pick. I picked um Tatsuro Tyra to go under his fantasy points on underdog. He went way under that, man. I just knew just I mean, they just people overlooked Tyra so much, man. I mean, it was just disrespectful at that point, man. So I knew he was a tough opponent, even though he lost to Clayton Carpenter, man. You gotta give that kid another fight, man. They should they shouldn't cut him from the UFC, man. He's really good. Um, except in our short notice, gave him a tough fight, almost finished him in that fight. So it's one of those things where it's like kind of like when Onama, not the same, but in a loss, Chira has really proved that he's um he's a really good prospect in the division as well, just as well as Ty- uh just just as good as Tyra, giving Tyra a really good test. And that's the thing that Tyra needs in his career. I saw after the fight, he like he picked up his mouthpiece and like kicked into the stands. You could tell that he was a little frustrated with that. Um, there's been discussion about Tyra being a better prospect than Muhammad Makayev. Maybe people put like push back on that a little, little more after that performance. But like I said, all these kids are young. They're all trying to learn MMA. I mean, the kid's 23. Like Makayev's younger. Like wait, I think he's younger than that. So they're all developing rapidly. I mean, they're you know. Developing on, on the biggest stage against the toughest opponents in the world. So this was bound to happen. But um I just I'm really impressed with Tyrus, man. I think people gotta we gotta chill on Tyra, you know what I mean? He's 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 good, but you know. <clears throat> let's uh let's slow our roll with him, man. Like he's he's young too, man. We gotta it's all like future champion stuff, man. He's, he's, a, he's a long way to go, man. He has the potential to do it, but definitely got tested in that match. That's, that's good for both of them. Man. Shout out to Edgar Chires. Um, women's strawweight bout. Yasmin Yaregi versus Denise Gomez. Another hit for Mexican MMA. A lot of people were counting out Denise Gomes. Um, I said in my breakdown that it was going to be a, a close to contested fight. Like, Gomes is going to go out there. going to be a dog out there. I mean, I did... I did pick Uregi at the end of the day. Um, she just, I don't know, the fight ended so quick, man. She just got hit with one punch, and then, I don't know, she got hit with a big punch and, like, knocked her out, you know? I don't, like, uh, these last couple months, we've seen a lot of good, like, women's MMA, like, quality women's MMA, finishes, power in these divisions. I mean, I, I'm, I'm loving it right now. If we can keep this streak going in the next main event that we got going on, this is... It's really good. I mean, Gomes, as an underdog, heavy another heavy underdog too, man. I mean, you just can't count out these underdogs, especially in women's MMA. I keep telling y'all, man, you, you guys get so invested in these prospects, you know. Of all, I mean, of all genders, but especially women's MMA, man. You can't, you can't trust these people, man. 
I always tell people the story about uh, what's it called uh, that one girl, like um, Jacqueline Amadou, goes up against Sam Hughes. She's on like like a big losing streak. She looks like a bum in all all their other fights. She comes out, and this is a rising prospect. And Sam Hughes defends defends the submission attempts, defends the takedowns, and then comes out on top. Like just just gets like better, shows her veteranship. I mean, it's a big underdog, pretty much. A lot of people had Emery by sub. So I mean, I mean, some of that is MMA being unpredictable, but some of that's just I don't even know. That's <laughs> some wild stuff going on, man. You you can just never be so sure. So I was on the Uregi side. It's not much to really like. I mean, she she got hit with a shot, man. I mean, it was like, she just got pressured. Gomes just went in there, put the pressure on her, hit her with a big shot, and then that was it. Pretty much it. Like swarmed her. Yeah, so I mean, Uregi has a bright future. I, I think you shouldn't give up on her, but we definitely gotta um, chill on her too, man. I mean, a, a big theme was you know prospects coming out and performing, and other prospects coming out and disappointing. And Uregi kind of disappointed. Same with Tyra, a little bit. Um, yeah. So and then next fight, Jimmy Crew Alonzo Minifield. I felt pretty good about this. I had I had Minifield. Winning by first round knockout. Um, well, I ain't even. How did he submit him? He submitted him. I didn't even notice. He must have got a choke or something. Or had him in a guillotine. Yeah, I think he had him. He tapped him. I don't know what he got him in, but it was set up by. It must have been set up by um, a big strike. But um, in the fight, I mean, if it, we we knew like I Menifee was gonna have the striking advantage, the power advantage, all that type of stuff. Um, and even when Menifee did get taken down. He got right back up. He fought really well. He just kept, I don't know, he just kept kept fighting really, really well. Crew didn't really have a, an answer. The striking wasn't really that, that much improved. The defense wasn't that much improved. The only thing he really had in that fight was the takedowns. And it's kind of demoralizing when that's all you really have in a fight. You go to that well and just get completely shut down. The, the other guys being resilient, getting back up every single time. And that... I proved to be enough. I mean, the, I mean, we, we saw in the last. We already seen this fight before, though. I mean, the people picking crew. I, mean, I wasn't really sure, like, why why that was. We saw this fight before, and Minifield was on the way to winning. So this time he just doubled down and did it way way better. Getting the finish in the second round, he's very calm about it, very chill. I like the way he like, you know what I mean. He was very casual about it. It's unfortunate. I feel like everyone should have. A lot of these guys should have got like performance of the night bonuses, but. When everyone gets a finish, it's kind of hard to uh, get that get that bonus. I mean, Renat Renat Fakhrdinov had like a, a flawless performance, and he didn't get a bonus. So it's tough. It just it just depends on what type of card you're on, I guess. Some people are getting are getting bonuses, and they don't they don't even get finishes. So it just depends. And then Vitor Petrino, man, no, this guy, bro. Um, I thought he was going to knock out Marcin Pragnio. It was, a, it was a flawless performance pretty much by him. I mean, there wasn't any danger from Marcin's side. It seemed like Marcin was a little, I don't want to say scared, but at some point he kind of just got a little intimidated by Petrino later on in the fight. Uh, yeah, man, Petrino just used the size, the power. And at some point, I think he just wanted to lower the risk of like maybe Pratnio landing a shot because he was landing Pratnio early on was landing some good shots, but I think he felt the risk. I mean, he was getting he was he was, he was landing some really good shots, but then some big shots were coming his way as well uh, to counter that. So yeah, I think that that shook him up a little bit. Petrino's, I mean, uh, Pratnio's like unorthodox style was was pretty helpful in the striking at some points, but Petrino hit so hard. I thought he'd get him out of there early, though. But Pragnio stood resilient. And then, yeah, man, I mean, Petrino, I feel like if he stayed on the feet a little bit more, he probably could have gotten the knockout. But he would, like, have success on the feet and then just go for the takedown. It was like, bro, like, you, you could have he could have finished it for a lot more. I don't know if he was, like, trying to shoot for it. Like, he was, like, targeting, trying to get the submission. At some points when he was on top of Pragnio, he was, like, talking to his corner and he was like, Getting instructions, like what? What should I do in this in this moment? Um, it was just a flawless performance. It was all Petrino from from bell to bell. 
I thought Pride Neal, people were saying this would be one of the more competitive fights on the card. I thought Pride Neal would put up more of a fight. But nah, man, he just, just kind of... I mean, Petrino's big, man. He's a big guy. Like, I don't know how he makes the weight, man. He's, he's a big guy out there, man. So getting with that guy on top of you, man, it's, it's hard for Pride Neal to do much about it. So good performance by Petrino. And then come to the last three fights. Cameron Simon versus Terrence Mitchell, man. I tried telling y'all, man. It's, I mean, this guy, man, this guy. I don't know, bro. Terrence Mitchell, okay, he, I'm, I will say, he looked a little better than I thought he did. Like, he looked fast out there. He looked competent, like, a little bit. But still, like, that guy is so bad. Like, people said, like, oh, you know, Mitchell might have a chance. Like, or maybe, like, it's going to be a Simon by decision. You know, like, no, this guy is a, like, I will say it, this, this performance wasn't a, uh, a byproduct of, like, Mitchell being bad, though, like, this was Simon, I mean, the grappling uh, is improved, he got taken down immediately, and then was able to reverse the position, I was really impressed by that, um, and then he was able to flatten him out, and just, I mean, him being kind of like, he kind of has shorter limbs than, than, uh, than Mitchell, so he flattened the guy out, man, It just got on top of him, just started pounding him, it wasn't the typical, like, like, the knockout that he got on contender series against, uh, Joshua Wong Kim, where he had him against the cage, left hook. It wasn't that flashy knockout, but to flatten someone out, man, just pound on him. That's pretty brutal, too. So just seeing that evolution in, for such a young guy in that, I think he's a, is he a flyweight? Uh, oh, it's a bantamweight. Okay, yeah. So in that bantamweight division, a lot, a lot of tough guys in bantamweight. Probably the most stacked division in the UFC, arguably. Bantamweight and lightweight. So, yeah, man, this is some big fight. I, I think you said he wanted Cody Garbrandt. I mean, why why wouldn't I pick Cameron Simon to beat Cody Armour at this point in his career, you know? But like I say, with all these prospects, like if you want to take that big step up, it's only up and up and up after that, you know? So you can't you can't like fight Cody Garbrandt and then because Cody Garbrandt was he like eight or whatever in the division. You can't fight him and be like, eh, he wasn't that good. So I'm gonna go back to fighting steady progression. Like, no, once you win the rankings, you're gonna be expected to fight people in the rankings. Unless everyone's ducking you, so Good performance by Simon, man. I think perform exceeded expectations for sure. Did what he was supposed to do. And then Hazel's Aguilar, man. I mean, it's a travesty, man. He he should have got a he should have got a um, performance of the night bonus, man. It's crazy. I I do agree. Like Drickus and Denise Gomes, like it was pretty because Denise Gomes big upset. So uh, like finishing a girl like uh, like Uregi in like what it was like it was a quick finish too, and then Drickus knocking out. One of the, I mean, he's a pound for pound guy. You know, this this is like, it's a big accomplishment, man, for Drickus to do. Like, he, this is the Reaper, the boogeyman, Robert Whitaker, man. Like, this guy's, he's, he's nice as hell, bro. He gave gave Izzy some good fights. He gave Yoel Romero, like, ate some of Yoel's biggest shots, and he just did that to him. Second round finished him, like, easy. It made it look easy. Um, so I understand why they got performance tonight bonus, but man, I mean, second fastest knockout in flyweight history. Now I will say, okay, like Shannon Ross, maybe not the best opponent. I don't know why I picked Shannon Ross. I ain't even gonna lie. Like that was kind of a, a, a that was an interesting pick, but he's tough. I, I thought I thought you know, but you see, if you watch Hazel Aguilar's tape, from what I saw, like he does throw a lot of wild punches and the wild overhand right, it landed, and it put him out. You know what I mean? So. Power, power at flyweight is pretty rare. So, if he can connect and like figure out how to land those on a more consistent basis and really um, hone in those skills, because I mean the last thing you want to do is just be like an overhand. Where all you do is you just have an overhand right on the feet, and then you just have some wrestling. Like you know, you definitely want to hone in those striking skills and utilize the, the you know your skills and then add the power to it. I mean. This guy, I, I heard comparisons to Davis, Davis and Figueredo. I mean, definitely could, definitely could be that that type of guy. If he continues to improve, so he's a Sagular man, good performance too. Um, and then, and then Shannon Ross, man. I mean, it's true, man. I mean, he's yeah, he's definitely being caught in the UFC, man. I, I believed in him, man. I thought, uh, you know. Sometimes I mean people. Some people they have good chins, but some shots you just can't. You know that was that was. Like he he flung that from the moon and landed on Mars. You know what I mean, or landed on Earth, right where I'm sitting, bro. Like, 
that was a big shot, bro. Meteorite. Something like that. Um, last fight of the night, Comella Kirk versus Esteban Rybovic. Rybovic. Really good fight, too. I thought Esteban, Esteban could have finished this fight, man. I mean, this this fight, they, they were they were shaking hands too much in the fight. From what I remember, man, it was just, come on, man. It was, no, I mean, at some point, like, let's fight, guys. I saw too much, too much dapping up. Like, they would land a shot. And it, even in the main event, I saw that, too, with Volk and, uh, Volk and Yair. Like, Volk would land a shot. Or no, yeah, you would land a shot, and then Volk would be like, all right, okay. And then Volk would land a shot. They, uh, they would acknowledge each other way too much. Like, guys, in those exchanges where y'all are, like, acknowledging each other's shots, you could be punching him, like, doing this type of stuff, man. Same with the, the Esteban. Esteban was letting uh, Carmella Kirk off the hook a little bit. Like, it looked like, mm, like they were sparring really, really hard. No, it wasn't a sparring session, I'm saying, but... It looked like two brothers fighting, but you didn't want to kill him, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would let him up. He would dap him up at some points in the fight. It just didn't. It, it came off like, I don't know. Like he, Esteban could have finished this fight, uh, like, plenty of times, you know? Kirk is tough, too. He's really tough, but he got a lot of chances to recover and stay in the fight by Esteban with all the dapping up he was doing. But good performance by, um, by Esteban. It, really good takedown defense because in the first round, Got taken down, got controlled for, like, most of the fight. And I was like, dang, bro, like, yeah, Esteban, it might be over. And then comes back, second and third round. Defense takedowns really well. Some of it was athleticism. Some of it was actual, like, good takedown defense. But all in all, putting that together, it made for, you know, keeping the fight on the feet, keeping it where he wants it to be. And getting really close to finishing the fight on multiple occasions, knocking him down, just really pounding on Carmella Kirk. Making it uncomfortable for him. Again, that unanimous decision victory. So, hold on, man. 290. Really good card. Really good, um, <clears throat> like, throughout from start to finish. Esteban Ribovich and Kamela Kirk could have honestly got fight of the night, too. If it wasn't for Pantoja, Moreno, and um, Turner Hooker. If I was going to make performance of the nights, man, I, man, I think. I, but I understand why they gave it to those other guys. Because then, yeah, Jesus Aguilar, Shannon, Shannon Ross is not the best opponent. For those guys to pull off upsets against the people that they did, it's pretty pretty monumental. So it's not a bad not a bad um, choice that they made. But And then Bo Nickel, you beat, you beat Val Woodburn. I mean, it's not... Yeah, I don't care how, how quick you knock them out. Like, it's not that impressive, you know. But for them to pull off upsets and then knock out the people that they did in the spots that they were in when they were counted out, it's pretty impressive. Um, I thought they would give Volk performance of the night, too. Cause, but he was also a favorite. I don't know. <clears throat> I think I probably would have went, like, if I really, like, broke it down and really thought about it, I probably would have went with the same things that the UFC did. Or that Dana White did. I don't know who makes those decisions, but yeah, good fight car, good event, definitely memorable. I mean, there was. I mean, I turned off my TV multiple times, man. Like, bro, I was, I was like mad at sometimes, man. Like, it was, it was some like crazy upsets, you know. I was just shocked sometimes, and there was obviously some joyous times seeing like Chires have the great performance that he did. Um, just I mean, good, good card. Hopefully next. I mean, it's it's gonna hard. To, it's gonna be hard to live up to that one. So uh, next week, we got Holly Holmes versus Myra Buena Silva. Bueno Silva. Not too many big names on the card, so definitely gonna have to. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a tough one. And then we have UFC London, which is like not not that good of a card either. And I think that takes us into UFC 291. So. Two, two hard weeks of UFC. We'll survive, though. At least we're getting something. And then the big one. It's 91. Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier, too. Alex Pereira versus Yablohovich. I'll get with y'all with those ones soon. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe. Peace out, most guy. You already know what it is.